What's up, YouTube? Welcome to my channel, or welcome back. Lovely to see you guys again. Uh, hope you are all having a wonderful week. Hope you guys have a good day today. Hope you get a text from your crush. <laughs> all that good shit, but um, yeah. So before we get into today's video, I first of all want to say thank you guys again for like the fifth week in a row. Um, I just can't believe my channel's been growing. Um, I'm at 3,000 freaking subscribers right now, and this video was originally supposed to be my 2,000 subscriber giveaway, so what the hell is going on? I also want to um, give a quick disclaimer about what I'm going to be talking about in this video. It is all purely my opinion. Um, I'm speaking from only my own experiences. I can't talk for anyone else, and I really genuinely want this to be just honest, um, and I want this to be a positive message. <laughs> As you may know from some of my previous videos or from the title of this video, um, I am a Brandy Melville employee. Um, and as much as I'm sure the internet would love to see me come out and expose or talk shit about this company or the other girls that I work with, um, sorry guys, but that's not going to be happening today. Um, I feel like it's the right thing to come out here and just have a little chat with you guys. I wrote literally so much on my phone that I want to cover because I am trying to be as... What's the fucking word? Thorough as I possibly can be because there's a lot going around on the internet right now about the store I work at and its employees. If anyone has been on TikTok or on YouTube recently, you probably have come across Brandy Melville employee videos, rude ASMR videos, um, mimicking, you know, what people perceive a girl at Brandy Melville acts like. Personally, I've gotten a lot of comments. I've had customers come up to me and, you know, make me feel a certain type of way towards my job. Um, the whole thing is uncomfortable. I first want to talk to you guys about how I got the job, um, why I applied there in the first place, and kind of just how I felt about the store going into things. Despite what you might think um, about me or about my background, um, I'm not like <laughs> the rich white girl that a lot of people perceive me to be. I've had my own financial struggles um, and it wasn't an option for me to get a job. I've been working since the age of 14, um, which by the way, I wasn't even legally allowed to work in the state of Connecticut at that age. So I had to get working papers um, and sign a bunch of stuff um, and have my parents involved. And my first job was in the restaurant industry. It was definitely not the ideal first job for me. It basically involved working with a lot of older people, working with a lot of older men, um, would constantly get lots of comments um, about, you know, me being like such a young, pretty girl. It was targeted at my body, my image. Um, it was just not a great work environment. Worked for about a year at this restaurant, and at that point, my anxiety and some other issues started developing, um, and it just became too much for me to continue at the restaurant. So. I moved on to my next job, which was working as um, a camp teacher. I also cleaned boats for about six months, um, which I actually enjoyed. And at the same time, I was going through high school and trying to stay on top of my grades. And I was taking multiple AP classes. It hasn't always been easy. And I don't just get jobs because my parents want me to get a work ethic. I was working from age 14 because I needed to do that um, for my family and for myself and for my education. Originally, for those of you who've been asking, I applied on indeed.com. No, I did not just get a picture of my outfit taken or get my Instagram handle. So I had to write a full page cover letter um, basically about why I would be a good fit for the retail industry, um, what I would bring to the table. For my resume, obviously I had all my previous jobs um, listed and that includes your GPA. I also decided to go in to the store in person and apply physically. My parents always taught me that was the best way to you know, give the company um, a real feel for your personality and just to show that you actually have an interest in working for them. For any of you guys who are thinking about applying, um, 
definitely wear something that shows your style. It doesn't have to fit in with the brandy aesthetic at all. Um, it just has to give a feel for, you know, what you would typically wear. You want to look presentable. Um, and yes, they do take a picture of your outfit for product research. So it's just a good idea to look nice. In addition to the questions that she asked me uh, face to face, I also had to fill out um, a half page form, you know, standard, typical job application stuff. After that first day and after she reviewed my indeed.com application, um, I got the job. So I didn't have to go back for like an additional interview or anything. I didn't feel at all uncomfortable. Um, you know, nothing on the application was about what size you are. It was all very professional um, and pretty much similar to the way I applied for every other past job I've had. You're expected to maintain a store's appearance from open to close. Um, you're expected to deal with customers, make sure the registers are all staying perfect throughout the day, make sure the fitting rooms are staying clean. Um, at the same time, you've got to make sure people aren't stealing from the store or attempting to steal. We have to clean the store, we have to clean the windows, um, vacuum, dust make propping, make sure the store is decorated properly. There is a lot of work that goes into running a store. We are not lazy. Um, we don't go there just to sit on our phones and talk and gossip. Um, it's nothing like that. It's just as much work as any other job. Um, I'd like to talk about some common misconceptions that people have about brandy employees or brandy policies. I've seen all over TikTok and all over YouTube people think Brandy Melville is one size fits all, or one size fits small. They see the one size tag and they think that everything is the same size, or that the brand expects everybody to be one size, but that is not the truth. Um, if you really were to size each article of clothing in our store, it would reflect sizes extra small through extra large. On some of our graphic t-shirts, if you look at the tag, that is printed, it will say extra large. I will go get a shirt for you guys. For example, if you look closely on some of the shirts, I'm not sure if this is going to focus, but right there, you okay, ignore my fingernails. On the original t-shirt, there is an extra large sizing stamp. You really can't say that one size fits small is our policy or that all of the clothes are made for a double zero body type. Also, when you think in terms of manufacturing and production and pricing, um, you know, from a business standpoint, the one size idea actually helps to cut costs to make production faster. And that is why you are able to see a t-shirt at Brandy Melville sell for $18 or $16 while at Urban Outfitters, for example, a shirt would probably cost around 40 bucks. Young girls right now on the internet are looking for something to gossip about or talk shit about. I'm not saying it's perfect. I'm not saying it's the most inclusive store. Um, it's definitely not, and I can say that it is far from that. As someone who understands business um, and the business of fashion, it's really just a concept that works for you know, many companies. You know, there's so many shops that cater to wide ranges and that's something super important and I think every store should do, but they're able to get their prices down by having everything made and produced in one size. The next thing I wanna talk about kind of relates to the whole one size policy, um, but it's the misconception that Brandy Melville promotes eating disorders. Um, trust me, coming from someone who has had their own experiences with eating disorders. Um, I really don't think that this is a problem um, strictly applying to Brandy Melville. Um, I think this is a much larger problem. It's one that we see in almost every internet store or um, boutique that is popular right now. Um, Free People, O Polly, Princess Polly, Tiger Mist, all of these companies are promoting the same body standards. Um, this is not a Brandy Melville problem. These are issues that are so much bigger than one company. Um, these are issues with the media and with how we treat each other and how we talk about each other. Um, it's a problem with Instagram. It's a problem with news networks and TV shows and YouTube videos. Um, it's not right. It's not something that I agree with, but it's what sells and it's sad. And I don't think that we're gonna fix this by 
bringing down Brandy Melville employees. Believe it or not, working for this company helped me to get to a healthier weight and helped me to start eating again because I have some days 10 hour shifts. Um, my body wouldn't function if I wasn't putting nutrients in it during those shifts. Sometimes the girls in the store bring in donuts or cookies. Um, you know, it's given me this circle of girls that I can talk to about how I'm feeling and I can relate to because they're feeling the same pressures. This is a global issue. This is not an issue at just one store. People love to claim that Brandy Melville has no diversity. Um, again, this goes with the whole, all of the girls are underweight. They're all white, all have blonde hair. They're all pretty girls, skinny girls. And, and I'm not saying that it's a perfect company. I'm not saying that it can't be more diverse. Obviously, it can be 100%. Um, yes, I am one of those skinny, pretty, stereotypical white girls. As one of those girls, I want to use my privilege and my platform to be able to talk about how we can bring more diversity into our brand. If you do a scroll through any of Brandy Melville's Instagrams, um, there are models of different ethnicities, different races, um, different sexualities. It's not the most diverse company. It's definitely not up there with Dolls Kill. I just want all of you guys to realize that you're all accepted, um, at least by me. And if you walked into our store, you would be handed an application no matter what you look like, no matter what size you are, what color you are. Yes, there are so many things that Brandy Melville could work on, just like any other brand. It's been nothing but professional and positive for me. For sure, diversity can be worked on. Um, for sure, size inclusivity can be worked on. I just hope that this message comes across to all the girls who are feeling excluded. I genuinely want everyone to feel accepted and worthy and beautiful in whatever body shape or size you are. If any of you guys have had a bad experience with a worker at any store or specifically at Brandy, I'd like to talk about it. Wow, this is getting really deep and I don't know why I'm feeling emotional. I think I'm about to get my period, but if you made it all the way to the end of this video, you're in luck. I figured I couldn't go wrong with getting you guys some jewelry, some scrunchies, and some makeup. Um, these cow print heart earrings bedazzled um dangly earrings these next ones are my personal favorite pair of earrings from brandy um, so these ones are a little thicker and they are silver this one is my literal staple necklace i've worn this so many times all my friends know another this one's more of like a choker the brandy signature butterfly necklace this one says baby on it Doing two rings from brandy Got the classic yellow, gray, navy, and red. And then I also went to Ulta and I picked up a couple things from Morphe. Um, I haven't tried either of these palettes out yet, but they were so cute. Um, um, and then also I'm giving away this Morphe four-piece eyebrush set to be including this Jeffree Star X Morphe setting mist. So me being the dumbass that I am, uh, forgot to mention how you can enter the giveaway. All you got to do to enter this giveaway is live in the United States, subscribe to my YouTube, follow me on Instagram, and leave a comment with your favorite song. Um, also, if you want to give this video a like, feel free, but no pressure. Thank you guys for watching if you made it to the end of this video. Yeah, again, thanks to everyone who's been supporting me lately uh, and everyone who's waiting for stickers. I'm gonna ship them out on the same day as I ship out the giveaway. I've got like a huge list of people who want stickers. Um, literally, there are over 50 people who have asked me. I never expected it to get this big, so it's gonna take time, but your stickers are coming, y'all. Finally, on a last note, I'm sending thoughts and prayers out to everyone who is a victim of the coronavirus or in China or in Italy quarantined. I'm really sorry to anyone out there who's lost someone to the coronavirus or is, you know, currently struggling or sick with it. Sorry if this video wasn't like all my usual ones. I will be back with tutorials and get ready with me's and vlogs soon. Um, thanks for hearing me out. Um, and I will see you guys next week. And don't forget, 
into the giveaway. Thanks for tuning in. Peace, love, pixie dust.